Hello, good evening, and thank you for inviting me. Um, sorry about the English. If uh, you don't understand anything, you can ask me later, whoever wants to do it. Um, my name is Ana Maria. I'm a political scientist. Uh, I studied in a Brazilian university, in a national university of Minas Gerais. And today I live in Brasilia. I work at the Chamber of Deputies and I work uh, with uh, the deputies uh, in many issues but uh, mostly in the, at the international relations and uh, democratic uh, participation of civil society inside the parliament. And I am also a member of the Communist Party of Brazil. I'm a member of the Central Committee since uh, 2009. I was a member of the national, national direction of our youth also. The, we call our socialist youth. It's the youth of the Communist uh, Party of Brazil. And uh, today, um, tonight, I was, I'll speak a little bit with you, talk a little bit about uh, a very, very hard and dramatic situation we are living in Brazil. We have uh, a president, uh, President Dilma. She was elected uh, for the second time in 2014. And uh, it was not easy to win that election for the left uh, in Brazil. Uh, it was not pure left, we were in a front with uh, parties which are, which we call from the center uh, on the spectrum of uh, Brazilian politics and uh, it was not, in, it, it was not uh, an easy election and uh, since uh, the beginning of 2015 we started uh, to, to face a huge campaign uh, mobilized by the press, the Brazilian, uh, connected internationally with, uh, with uh, we know who, uh, that finance uh, the national press in Latin America against popular governments. And uh, with uh, enterprises and industry sector, and uh, these uh, corrupt uh, par uh, deputies and senators and parties which are uh, involved in corruption in our country, and they started uh, to build this uh, what we call neoliberal coup uh, or institutional coup which uh, took off President Zuma from uh, of, uh, the presence and we are waiting for the judgment in the Senate. She is not, uh, she is still our president but she cannot uh, function as a president, so the vice president, the one that was elected as a vice president is now really uh, the country in a very bad uh, way, destroying many things that we have uh, conquered uh, the last uh, 10 years. It's very important to say that uh, what happened in Brazil is tied uh, with what happened in Argentina and uh, what happened in uh, what's happening in Venezuela and other countries in Latin America as we as happened with if in Honduras and Paraguay and other uh, mainly these uh, countries is different from Argentina because in Argentina we had uh, national elections and the, the right wing won the elections and uh, it's also different uh, of the process in Venezuela, but they are all linked and uh, we know that 
the civil society in these uh, countries is been, uh, has been um, used or financed by uh, international uh, interests on uh, putting down these popular governments. So I'll read uh, something I just pointed to to be easy because as the English is not uh, my my first language, so I have some difficult to explain uh, some things uh, in English. So uh, what it would be good uh, to stress that. Um, since 2002, after two, uh, 22 years of uh, military dictatorship in, in Brazil, uh, after a big uh, uh, mobilization and big struggles against dictatorship, which ended in 1985, only in 2002, the left uh, wing in Brazil uh, could be at the government as the, as the pre in the national president the government with uh, with Lula and he, Lula was elected by the leading the workers uh, party and he was the president till 2010 2010 we elected President Dilma for the first time, she was the president from 2011 to 2014 when we had the second uh, election. It's uh, important to say that in 2013 we had big mobilizations in Brazil, uh, big mobilizations against uh, corruption, against uh, not against, but in favor of uh, urban reforms and mobilizations for more money for education, for health, public uh, transport, and these big, big uh, demonstrations that uh, occurred in 2013 did uh, something we we didn't had uh, we didn't uh, experience before with uh, Lula. Uh, the popularity of, D of the D Dumas popularity was uh, was uh, after demonstrations was not good. Uh, came from. 70% uh, of approval to 30%. So it was the first time that the right wing saw the opportunity to take uh, off, to ban uh, this workers' party governments um, in, uh, in Brazil. During this uh, more than 10 years, the Workers' Party, they implemented many important reforms. Uh, the minimum wage, for example, was doubled and public and social services were expanded, especially in education, and we had Lula created many um, new universities and high schools and basic education uh, schools. Poverty was reduced uh, by 55%. Extreme poverty were, was uh, reduced by uh, 65%. And inequality was reduced uh, significantly. In Brazil, uh, was and still is one of the most unequal countries uh, in the world. And what happened is that some workers' party members were involved in corruption cases. And this thing uh, with the demonstrations of 2013 created more opportunity to the right wing to uh, prepare uh prepare to take off uh, 
Lula and Dilma of the presidency. It's important to say that these uh, people which today are ruling the country, they they have they have uh, difficulty to win the elections by the popular vote. They have uh, very big difficulty to 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 win because population they don't have they don't have the confidence of the uh, of the population. Our actual uh, president, which was the vice president of Dilma, he is deeply uh, involved in corruption and unpopular. It's, he's an unpopular politician, and uh, he is in this moment, for example, accused in, of involvement in an illegal. Uh, Iran ethanol purchasing scheme and other schemes. Uh, he is uh, for eight years banned. Of uh, he cannot uh, be elected. He cannot run for any election. In the same way, he is in the pres. He is at the. He is the president uh, today. Not legitimate president, as we say here. <clears throat> and what we say is that the real purpose behind this uh, coup was uh, was to uh, restart in Brazil a new liberal agenda, a new liberal agenda that they tried or they actually did uh, start with Fernando Henrique Cardoso in the beginnings of the 90s, under what we call the Washington's uh, consensus. <clears throat> and they are ruling the country for 30 days and they already did many things in that way. They, they, they have a very, very clear agenda uh, neoliberal agenda. Something that was a surprise uh, for everybody because it is uh, it was uh, too much clear of what they represent is that the ministers they they presented as the government were <coughs> they are all, all of them white male rich uh, people. They don't have black people, they don't have youth, they don't have women uh, at the cabinet. And they closed the national secretaries for women, for youth, for racial uh, inequalities. <coughs> they closed the Ministry of Culture. They closed many social programs now, for example, they are about to close uh, this health, uh, fam uh, family uh, health care, uh, which are uh, w in which we have Cubans, uh, medic um, doctors, and uh, they are about to to close it. So they are destroying. Uh, many uh, of the projects uh, <clears throat> that Lula and Dilma uh, built in the country to attend the popular and the, the poor people. And they, they are not even uh, the official government because while uh, <clears throat> the Senate, while they don't vote for the the impeachment, which will be probably in August, they are not uh, the official government. They are uh, the step government or something, uh, or something uh, like that. So these are some things that I would like to stress uh, for you. This uh, coup is part of. Uh, a project for Latin America from the right wing in our region. Uh, this scope, they have a, 
it, they have a neoliberal agenda, so they want to privatize, they want uh, to take uh, out labor's rights, and uh, they are against the social equality. They are <coughs> uh, they are for the criminalization of the left uh, wing. They are for the end of the investigations about corruption in our country because they are the corrupt people which will be in jail if the <clears throat> our federal police and our police continue in our justice continue to uh, investigate and judge uh, the corruption and uh, they are doing things really fast because uh, they know they are uh, running against time. Uh, for example, yesterday, uh, the head of the chamber of the deputies, uh, the deputy uh, Eduardo Cunha, uh, <coughs> lost uh, in the Eric uh, Commission. Uh, <coughs> they approved for uh, he can lose. Uh, his mandate as a deputy and obviously as the president of uh, the Chamber of Deputies. The president of the Senate is also under uh, justice uh, <coughs> investigation. And from our side, from the parties, left parties and social movements, we have uh, at least two national fronts uh, I'll say it in Portuguese and then in English. One is the Frente Brasil Popular. It's like a popular Brazil front. And we have this front, uh, Povo Sem Medo, which is uh, not afraid people. Uh, and, uh, uh, and these two national fronts, which have... Uh, trade unions, students, women, uh, landless movement, uh, homeless movement, uh, all kind of um, movements, of social movements, civil society organizations and left uh, parties. We are uh, organizing demonstrations and protests and marches every week, mainly the big cities like Rio de Janeiro, São Paulo, Brasilia, which is uh, the capital, and but also in Bahia and Rio Grande do Sul, in other parts of the country, every day we have an activity. Everywhere there is a minister of this uh, illegitimate, not legitimate government, we are uh, demonstrating. And uh, the this step president is not able to appear um, in many places because people are uh, on streets and uh, also internationally we are uh, we have some initiatives and international forums in meetings international official or not official uh, meetings and with uh, intellectuals, academics, or people, or, or journalists, or whatever we have of uh, people doing international relations on sites, social movements, and social is civil society, and uh, we are trying to do it to to say to the to the world that what is going on in Brazil is a coup which was massacred, which was uh, supposed to be an official constitutional impeachment, but it's not because they could not prove yet that President Dilma did uh, anything uh, against the constitution. She, they don't have a crime to uh, punish her on it with an impeachment 
So they know it, that's why they are running against time to do uh, many right wing right reforms, conservative reforms, and to destroy some uh, achievements we had. But at the same time, even if they don't have uh, a proof of any crime, they have uh, they have the press in their hands. The, this press is making is producing in uh, public opinion against the Workers' Party, against the left, against Lula, against Dilma, saying that. Uh, Dilma and Lula destroyed uh, Petrobras, destroyed our state, were robbing, were uh, stolen the country and destroyed the country. So they are building this public opinion uh, with uh, the press. They have much money, they have uh, many industries and many enterprises uh, to support them. But at the same time, for example, today they revealed uh, a poll that uh, that President Temer, 65% of people reject him. Uh, they don't want him as uh, a perhaps president. And uh, to finish uh, my explanation and to to hear from you what uh, you want to know and ask. Uh, in this uh, exact moment, this very moment, we are trying inside the left uh, wing uh, to have a consensus about uh, a proposal of having a referendum in Brazil. Is a referendum to ask people if they want to anticipate the elections, national the elections, or not. This is something we have. Uh, if President Dilma uh, comes back uh, against the judgment in the Senate, so she will present to the people uh, the opportunity to vote if they want to anticipate election or not. It is part uh, of um, a compromise of uh, something that she uh, will uh, propose and it can influence in some senators. Some senators may uh, sen uh, inside the Senate some sectors which are against Dilma, against uh, Workers' Party they could vote uh, no for the impeachment if President Dilma says she will propose a referendum. And uh, But inside the left and inside this front I was explaining to you, it's not, we don't have a consensus because some uh, movements, as landless movement, which is very strong in Brazil, MST, they are against. They they say that we knew we need to resist. We knew to we need to struggle against the coup uh, till the battle of the Senate in August. And uh, if we lose, uh, if if we win, we need to try to to make the conditions and give the support for President Dilma to, uh, to stay in the, at the presence until 2018. And if we, uh, if, we, if we lose, we need to build um, again, rebuild again a majority, a public opinion in favor of the left to uh, propose a name for the 2018 presidential elections. Um, it's a very, uh, I don't know if uh, I could uh, express uh, to you really how dramatic is uh, this uh, situation because when you have a government, when we ha you have a president elected uh, by the 
more than 54 million of Brazilians. A president which was um, she was continuing a process of change uh, in our state in favor of the poor uh, people, which took out 40 million people out of the ex of, of the poverty, and uh, which w this government was uh, had the politics for women, for racial uh, issues, for homosexual uh, issues, for youth, uh, for so uh, many uh, sectors, uh, for uh, so for so many time marginalized and excluded of our society and in in a in a fraud uh, in a not legal process of an impeachment they they take out this president of her uh, job as the president uh, and, and uh, puts uh, in her place, this uh, this old, white, rich, and corrupt man uh, to destroy everything and uh, to manage politics in a way that uh, they can maintain, they can exist in this corrupt uh, system, and they can destroy this uh, achievement is it's very sad and it's very dramatic and uh, it's very we feel, we feel very impotent we feel very uh, we feel very weak and we need to struggle against uh, against the press against the money uh, against the common sense against the the public opinion which was built against Juma as a woman also uh, because they destroyed her image also as a woman uh, able to rule, uh, rule the country to, to manage with uh, politi politics they destroyed the image of the workers party and they are destroying the image of Brazil at international um, in the, at international Arena as a, as a partner, a very strong partner inside BRICS, inside UNASUL, inside MERCOSUL, inside uh, CELAC, a country which was leading a process of integration in South uh, America, which was uh, had as uh, very important uh, the South South agenda helped so much the Af African people and the Afri uh, African process of emancipation. So it's uh, it's very difficult and uh, because we together with all of this uh, we are facing a very strong economical crisis with huge unemployment and uh, with rise of the prices of uh, basic items of uh, for every family food and everything so um, well thank you for hearing this and for your solidarity and uh, if you could uh, also help us to spread this um, these informations and in anyhow uh, help us to make uh, people know about what uh, Brazil is facing today it would be very good thank you okay thank you Anna we will open the floor uh, for discussion uh, <coughs> now So if you'd like to uh, ask a question or make a comment, 
please use your raised hand icon and we'll be able to call on you. Click your raised hand icon to indicate that you want to uh, introduce a question or uh, make a comment. Okay, click your raised hand icon and leave it clicked. Okay, Emil, your line is open. Uh, hello, Ana Maria. This is Emil Skeppers. Uh, I've got your job in the Communist Party USA. I'm our international secretary. And you and I met uh, some years ago when you visited us in New York. And uh, uh, I still remember that that well, uh, very well received occasion. Thank you very much for doing this. Thank you. I, I, well, I have two good pieces of good news. You probably have them already. Uh, that last month our main labor union federation in the United States here, the AFL-CIO, put out a statement denouncing the coup in Brazil. This is quite a breakthrough. If you remember some of the old attitudes of U.S. labor, it wasn't uh, so progressive. And just last week, uh, the Coalition of Black Trade Unionists which is a major labor group from many unions, uh, put out another statement asking that President Obama refused to recognize the Temer government. But there's a lot more that, uh, that we are going to need to be doing here. So I thank you again for, for being with us. Thank you. Should I comment now or Wait for more questions. I don't know. What do you think? Let's see if we can get a few more. Um, Bill Waddell, your line is open. Bill Waddell, your line is open. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. What has been the United States' reaction, if any, to what has been going on currently in Brazil? Which was the United States' reaction? Reaction. Uh, correct. In, in other words, there has been uh, some information here through groups like Democracy Now! Um, and about this being a Brazilian coup, but what has actually been the reaction of the United States government to what is going on? I think they are waiting for the Senate to judge finally. This is the information I have. They are not. Uh, they didn't officially recognize because, but they didn't say anything about coup or something like that. Okay. Information I have. Okay. Andrew Gant, your line is open. Andrew, your mic is open. Boa noite, Ana. Hello, my name is Andrew. <clears throat> I studied uh, in Brazil two years, no, longer than that. I studied in 2011 and 2012 at the Universidade Federal da Bahia. Um, hey. And I've been accompanying everything. And above all, I'll say, fora teme e fora cunha. But um, I had three questions which I had typed uh, throughout the time here. I'll just list them off. You don't have to answer them right away. I mean, we can take other questions first. Um, the first question I kind of thought was uh, just in, vo in, the, in regards to the, the voting on the Ethics Commission against Cunha. Um, they obviously voted him down, uh, so by 11-9, the Ethics Commission of the House voted him down. Um, okay. So the first question would be, uh, how likely do you feel from your interactions with uh, different politicians in Brazil, how likely do you feel that in the general committee of the House, uh, his ouster will actually go through because I know the PMDB has so much support um, that they can really 
go either way, though it looks like his, he's been losing support basically lately. A lot of people have been backing away from him. Um, so that's the first question. Like I said, you can answer it any time or wait for later. Um, uh, the second question I had was kind of in regards to coalition building. Um, the fact that the Pene de Bay basically betrayed the PT in this situation and, and the coalition, it kind of sets a really bad precedent for left and centrist coalitions, which um, is especially interesting to me here in the States because we currently have a situation where we have Donald Trump on the right and Hillary Clinton on the, on the left. And Mrs. Clinton, mm -hmm. though she has some progressive values, is being decried by parts of our left as as part of the neoliberal faction, basically. Um, so what are your thoughts on the possibilities of coalition building now uh, between centrist and left parts of society? And those are all sure. my questions. Two questions, yes? Yeah. You did two, yes. Okay, thank you. And let's see, uh, Art, your line is open. Uh, y yes. Uh, hi, Anna Maria. This is Art Perlow from Connecticut. We met several years ago when you visited, and we still remember uh, you went on a bus trip with us with seniors to the state capitol. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's not my question. Uh, my question is, We've had evidence in various countries of large-scale intervention both by uh, U.S. covert and overt government agencies and semi-government agencies and corporate-sponsored uh, foundations in, uh, in countries like Venezuela and, uh, and other countries. Uh, do you have any evidence of their involvement in either the financing or providing uh, leadership or or uh, uh, or or guidance or, st or strategy for the right? And uh, aside from evidence, uh, aside from evidence, do you believe that they are involved? Okay, thank you, Art. Barbara, your line is open. Barbara, your line is open. Barbara, your line is open. Okay, Barbara, your line is closed. All right, Cameron, your line is open. Cameron, your line is open. Yes, hello. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I was just wondering if you could explain, give more specifics on uh, the strategies that the right wing has used to, uh, to tar tarnish the image of the Workers' Party. Um, I, like, uh, in, the, in the United States, I think many on the left, too, have had, like, uh, received a poor image of Brazil as being a neoliberal uh, or compromised state or something. Um, how much of that is a product of um, of propaganda, and how much of it is um, just rooted in the situation that the uh, Workers Party has had to deal with? Let me see if I understood. Uh, you mean how they managed to destroy the image of PT, the Workers Party, as a work Workers' Party uh, yeah. committed work. Yes. Yes. Mhm. Okay. Thank you, Cameron. Okay, you have a long list there, Anna. You might wanna, yeah. So you might wanna respond to what you have now, Anna. Okay. And we'll see if there's more. Okay. Uh, so uh, just. Uh, to say that uh, I agree with Emil uh, about what he said, trade unions in the U.S. and CEOs, if I'm not wrong, he said, and, uh, which are against the coup in Brazil, they, 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 they talk, uh, talked about it, they said that 
and about uh, also about uh, the Obama Obama's administration position. Uh, they didn't uh, recognize officially this uh, Demers government because I think because they are waiting for the, the end of the judgment uh, in the Senate and uh, because it's a complex uh, process because the process didn't didn't end yet it's it's occurring but uh, Dilma is not uh, She's put it away as the presence. It, so it seems like it. It uh, she's uh, uh, out definitely, but she's not. And um, uh, about the questions of the comrade that studied in Bahia, um, he was uh, speaking about the ethics committee yesterday. They voted. 11 against 9 for the against Eduardo Cunha, the president of the Chamber of Deputies. We think uh, as party and together with other parties, we believe that at the general plenary, at the general assembly of the deputies, the 513 deputies, it would be more difficult for him because of the public opinion which is very much against him uh, and this this year 2016 we have elections local elections so the deputies they are very worried about it be voting yes or no for this uh, specific issue will have an impact on their local basis uh, in, in the local elections and, uh, and the, during the last days the situation of Cunha and family and wife and his, his wife and family is getting worse day by day. So uh, we think we believe that it's uh, it's very possible to build a majority against him at the general plenary. Uh, about the coalition system, about the how we we build the coalitions, political coalitions. You are right. Uh, after this uh, betrayal of Pemi de B, which f since uh, the first Lula's government, they were in our coalition, and uh, I we think many things will change in in politics in Brazilian politics. I don't know at the local and regional level because the local regional level is. It's even it's, it's more difficult to change um, because the alliances, the coalitions, they are not really programmatic. Uh, they are based on some arrangements that uh, will take uh, many, many, many years to change because it it's, it it came uh, with our history of colonization, how our society was uh, organized in a very bad uh, in a very bad way of building uh, political relations. So, but I think the next elections, 2018 for presidents, uh, many things will change and the way we make this uh, coalition. We say today we are in a crisis of our uh, coalition system uh, in our politics. Uh, comrade from Connecticut asked about uh, uh, the sponsors and foundations and if 
uh, influencing civil society and he asked if we have evidence yes we have uh, we for example we discovered uh, that a big um, organizations which is called uh, which called one of is called uh, movimento brasil livre uh, free brazil movement and others uh, they were sponsored by uh, international organizations, by, they were supported by, uh, by parties and these parties with relation with some organizations and enterprises. So, so we do believe that and we do have evidence. We have how to prove they were sponsored uh, and uh, that's why they had so much money to make these big, big uh, demonstrations with a lot of material, a lot of t-shirts, a lot of uh, buses and, and food and everything very expensive because Brazil is a very big country for example, to organize a demonstration in Brasilia is very, very expensive because so, so many. Uh, but well, U.S. is also a big, big uh, country, so you know how costly it is to um, move people inside the inside the country. And um, about the strategy strategies to. Uh, damage the image of PT and what we can say they took a long time day by day trying to show people that uh, the contradictions of the workers party and the coalition system of the coalition of parties is, uh, is between parties is 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 one of the example is it's an example of one contradiction but at the same time if the workers party if they didn't have uh, alliance with central parties they could not uh, and even right parts right wing parties in regions they could not have achieved the possibility of being uh, in this um, in this gov regional and the national government and uh, it's obvious that uh, a big coalition uh, to win an election and after winning the election, uh, ruling the country, you can find a lot of contradictions and a lot of mistakes and a lot of problems. So they explored at maximum these uh, these mistakes, these contradictions to destroy the image of PT as a real workers party, really a party ruled by workers, uh, obeying the interests of the workers, but if at the same time if you get the main uh, achievements and the main uh, politics of the government, expanding the wage, uh, the minimum salary, uh, expand, expanding the universities, federal, national and federal universities, public universities, and helping families with uh, this huge program called uh, Mais Magicus, which we uh, had a uh, the support of Cuban government and they sent a lot of uh, doctors uh, for Brazil. For example, so, so if you focus on the real project, you, you can see that uh, the commitment of the Workers' Party with the workers and the people, the poor people. But the, the media, the big press and the opposition, they uh, had uh, they were able to destroy a lot of the image of the workers party and next October 
when we have uh, local elections for mayors and local representatives, we will see how much they damaged, how much they uh, were able to destroy the link between PT and people and the workers. That's it. Okay, uh, Anna, uh, very quickly I'm going to read some of the questions that were written. They're short questions, okay? We can hear, we can hear Anna's children in the background and that will be just fine with us uh, because we can hear her as well. So one question is why was Dilma's popularity so much less than Lula's? Another question is how much hope can we can be expected to form a left government in Brazil? Another question is have there been mass arrests and repression of the left? Another question is will the military step in and try to take control? The military. Yes. Will the military step in and try to take control? And the last question, are the, are the left forces engaging public opinion with their own press? Yeah, just a minute. I think now it's better. <laughs> and um, well, about Dilma, Dilma's popularity. Uh, when Dilma was elected in 2010, and then she started in 2011. Yes, 2011. She had a popularity. She has a big and huge popularity as Lula. Uh, not exactly like, like Lula because Lula by the end of the government was had a very was a high popularity but for some reasons that we still need uh, to study and to understand better 2013 in the March 2013 in São Paulo, uh, people can, uh, you can uh, go after if you want to, to know more about it. It's called June 2013, demonstrations of June 2013. It started in March 2013 uh, about uh, were demonstrations in São Paulo about the price, the cost of the public transport, uh, public buses uh, of the city of Sao Paulo. And these demonstrations suddenly got so, so huge, very, very big. And uh, they were not about uh, public transport anymore. Uh, not only that, people were demonstrating like putting out everything they were not uh, uh, managed to, to were not comfortable with with the, the politicians with deputies and mayors and governors and, and the politics in general with corruption and the situation in the public uh, hospitals and the teachers wages oh, so big, big, big demonstrations, huge demonstrations in Rio and Sao Paulo, millions of people. And they were not against Dilma. They were not asking Dilma to go out. They, they were uh, mainly protesting for local issues, for things that governors, uh, state governors and mayors are responsible. But it created a situation of chaos in the country. And in this moment, Dilma's popularity was put down, very, very down. 
and after that to recover this popularity was not easy and there is something that uh, it helps also to explain Lula and Dilma they are really many they are different in the way they make politics Lula is a typical Brazilian politician which uh, talks with everybody makes uh, politics with everybody Dilma she has a more technical uh, she's more technical she never uh, she, she, she doesn't uh, show as a, a person available to be talking about politics with uh, hundreds of deputies and senators and governors as Lula did so Dilma was not feeling comfortable inside this uh, white man uh, Brazilian uh, politics, politics um, uh, environment. She was like an estranged, she was like a strange uh, inside between them. So, also the way she, uh, the way she behaved and the way she makes politics, I th we think it also has. Uh, uh, she's not a charismatic as Lula. She, she's not. Uh, she, her speech are not so charismatic. So uh, as Lula, she doesn't have this connection, communication or connection with people as Lula have. Has and if we can have hope, I think. Uh, Speaking as a communist, I think we always need to have hope and uh, <coughs> um, and we are we, we are consci we have conscience of uh, we are, are consciousness about uh, uh, how difficult is is this uh, moment, but we still have uh, hope that we can rebuild the left, a left front and uh, try to be ahead of the government, the national government again. We did about repression on demonstrations. We have some, but we don't have this, we don't have big uh, repressions. We have, um, for example, in Sao Paulo, with government of Sao Paulo, which is a uh, right-wing government, we had uh, repression against students, violence against uh, protesters, and we have some cases, but it's not a general thing. Generally, we are making marches and protests and demonstrations and mobilizations, and uh, the police, we don't have mass uh, repression. Uh, we don't think the military, uh, the military will uh, take any. Ad they will not advance, and they will not put their step. Uh, they will not step uh, forward. Um, they will respect the decisions of the Senate, uh, the decisions of the Congress and the, the Justice, uh, the, the Supreme Court. We, we, don't, we don't feel like, uh, we don't feel like any, we don't have any evidence that uh, the military sectors, even those who are against um, Workers' Party and Lula and Zilma and the left, they will not advance. They will respect the political decisions without taking any any measure. The left force. I didn't. I don't remember the last question. I just 
Uh, well, I don't remember the last question about the left forces. Okay, it's, it's uh, are the left forces engaging public opinion with their own press? Yes, well, yes, we have a, a very strong uh, movement in communication, and which we call in Portuguese uh, comunicação alternativa, alternative um, vehicles, alternative way of uh, making uh, making communication and uh, we think, we, we believe that Lula and Dilma they could have uh, done more about it as Cristina Kirchner did, as Rafael Correa did in Ecuador, as Chavez and Maduro as they did in Venezuela. In Brazil the Workers Party government not Lula, not Tilma. They didn't uh, create conditions for the democratization of communications. They didn't. Uh, they didn't create politics for this, for the democratization. We have a big monopoly monopoly of uh, communication in Brazil. And um, what they did was very little. It, this is something we know, and then we talked with them about it. And we are suffering because of uh, this uh, today. This it was big, one of the biggest mistakes of these governments. And now, God, this step president Temer cut it a small amount of money. Was this that was destined uh, to uh, blogs and uh, websites and newspapers of uh, some uh, vehicles that they called as uh, leftist uh, communication vehicles? They cut it. So now we are worse than we were before. We were not very good, and now we, we are worse in this. Uh, this specific point. And if the Brazilian left, if we don't change this, it would be very difficult to uh, dispute public opinion and to be in government again. And if we are in government again and we don't work for uh, public communication and for democratic of the communications uh, will happen again everything. That's it. Okay, and uh, on behalf of uh, everyone, uh, we'd really like to thank you for taking time away from your work and your children, your family uh, tonight. It really makes a difference when we can hear uh, from people who are actively involved uh, in countries around the world to help us to understand uh, what's going on and even how we can help. And we heard you when you said uh, one of the things we can do is to contribute to spreading the truth uh, and the news about what's going on uh, in Brazil. Uh, and so again, Thank you uh, on behalf of, uh, thank everybody for participating and all those who participated, I thank uh, Anna again. So with that, uh, there are other questions, uh, a lot of questions, but unfortunately uh, we're, we are out of time. We'll have to figure out how to do I, I answer by mail. <laughs> e email you? Okay, okay. So uh, again, so uh, thank you for participating uh, and have a good night. Good night. Thank you so much thank you. for everything. Thank you.